All right, cool. So, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. What did you guys think? I already know what you think, so don't even bother telling me. Other than Tuan. Tuan, you could tell me because you just got here. <laughs> you ugly? <laughs> you ugly. Yeah, they are pretty ugly. Uh, so this is the first game I've played on the PlayStation 5. And uh, it was pretty fun. I actually liked it quite a bit. I, I, the, I think, story-wise, I definitely prefer the remaster. And story-wise for Miles Morales, I think it's pretty weak. I think I, I think it's a weak story. Uh, it had a fine kind of angle going for it, and I think they did a good enough job with Miles as a character, but not the most interesting story. It, it was a really weak story, in my opinion. I didn't really feel what they were going for with the guy, you know? Not, to, not so great. I think Peter's story was more understandable for a Spider-Man. You know, it was more it was more processable and more Spider-Man-y. This one was kind of weak. Kind of weak. But it's not as long, so obviously it wasn't like its own standalone game. Uh, so I guess, like, it's okay if the story isn't all that good. I think it's okay. You can kind of give it a bit of a pass because it's a smaller-sized game, right? But let's talk about the things I really liked, and that is simply they made a better Spider-Man. They, they made it so the velocity is not capped... So you can go fast when you web swing. That is really, really great. Uh, 60 FPS is definitely super good. And compared to the remaster, I really liked how they animated Miles. Miles is super, super fucking good. He's really free form. He can move everywhere. More importantly, I think they animated him with the knowledge that you could play in 60 frames per second. And they really built towards that objective. I think the animations really work super well for that. Uh, the way that Spider-Man left was trash for the tour. I hated that. I definitely hated that. I would have. I really liked the intro chunk where you're working with Peter Spider-Man. I really liked that. I thought that was a great introduction to the whole thing, and it really set a nice pace. And it just really went story-wise downhill from there. This kind of was like whatever. Uh, but. The gameplay wise is really good. I, I I don't I don't know how I feel about giving Spider Man extra superpowers, other than the web the web swinging and stuff the the web usage, um, giving Spider Man these like electric powers and the camouflage was a little weird. Huh. Ah, whatever. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, it's it's a good game. It's de Miles is definitely a better game package as a game than Remaster, but it doesn't. It's not as long, and there's a lot of like side quests that you could definitely. They definitely want you to do. There's a lot of side shit they want you to do in this one, and that's kind of how they pad it out, right? That's just padding. Mm, but like the way that you web swing is largely the same, but they made little minor things that. Like, the way you animate out of your swings and then the next one, it looks really, really good. Like, I'm super surprised. Weird. Uh, what else? What else? I, there's not a whole lot else to say, I guess. I mean, it, it is it is a better version of the remaster of Spider-Man. That's really it. However, the original Spider-Man is more interesting as a story. I really, really like that one. This one had a good start, but then it just kind of dies down. And then the gameplay is good. I, I don't really like the idea of giving a Spider-Man more powers than just his web stuff. But I know that this particular Miles Morales character has that anyway so i mean it's a comic book thing right mm, it worked out mechanically because in the original game you really didn't have a lot of combat options with with peter parker and it got pretty boring after a while you know combat was really quite samey so in this one it's kind of nice to be able to have this 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 uh venom power whatever you know this electric stuff where he and then that leaves, like, uh, a status effect on enemies, and you could do more things with that. Uh, that was a good approach to make the combat more involved. It actually felt pretty good in that respect. So, it's definitely a 
combat wise and gameplay wise i feel miles morales is better than remaster by a little bit there's a there's a lot of little touches that really work it's a game that seems to be designed to be played in 60 frames per second so that really benefits from it because if you play the remaster in 60 frames spider-man's animations are pretty uh non non flamboyant you know they're they're pretty rigid pretty basic and i think that's because it was intended to be played in 30 frames uh, so there wasn't really a whole lot of over-the-top movement that they wanted to do with Parker. But with Miles, they went they went really overboard. Like, the way he moves in the air, he's always moving. He's always got a lot of motion to his attacks and everything, and, like, it works out really well. It looks great. It Visually, it looks really fun. Uh, Mechanic-wise, it feels good in the hands. It gets a little complicated with all the buttons that you can do, but it doesn't matter because as you gain those skills... Venom comes back really fast, and I like that. I didn't even really play with the gadgets much, you know? I just kind of grabbed some basic ones and, and ran off. I'd say the skins kind of sucked. I didn't like the suits as much as I liked the suits from the first game. And... Mm, I, I just... I don't know. I, while I appreciate that they had these powers to add more to the combat... I'm a very basic Spider-Man fan, and I like Spider-Man with his combat, his martial arts, and his webbing. I don't really care to have more powers on top of that. So, in a, in a way, it feels kind of not as Spider-Man to me. To me, it doesn't seem as Spider-Man. It's just having basic Parker's powers. But for what it is, it's good. For a video game, I think it worked out really well. I think it's a fun game. And I would say it's a little bit better than than the basic game. You know, the remaster Spider-Man, I'd say it's a bit better, a little bit better. The, all the, the, the weather especially, the snow is really, really fucking good. Um, with that said, really, the, this, this is the, this, this was kind of like a showcase of the PS5, right? And as much as we tried, we tried to play Fidelity Mode, and it really wasn't that interesting. Fidelity Mode versus Performance Mode, in Fidelity Mode. Those 60 frames just, like, it blows everything out of the water. It's impossible to, like, really be cool with losing those 30 frames and then gaining the ray tracing and the lighting. Uh, it just doesn't look good. I, I tried to switch back to it in the middle of the game, and I, I did the same for a remaster. And it looks, it looks good if you're just kind of standing there on street level looking down the way. It looks good, but... You gotta start playing the game. <laughs> you gotta start moving. You gotta start running around. And then you're like, I'm missing frames. I'm I'm missing frames. Where are they? Like I'm just this doesn't look this doesn't look good, you know? It looks rough in motion when you don't have those 30 extra frames. So it's so hard to not just say like this game is the best in 60. It's so hard not to say that. In as having the choice on the PS5. It's almost like it almost like there is no choice. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, what's the point of ray tracing? What's the point of ray tracing? If if you're just you're you're beating things up and, and shit like that, like what's the point of having reflective surfaces be more accurate in their reflections, you know? Whereas 60 frames, you're fucking you got 30 whole more frames to look at Spider-Man do the coolest fucking smooth shit in the world. It's like, that's, it's just so much better. It really is much better. Um, I don't know what else to say. This, this is the first game we've played on the PS5 and ultimately I'm super impressed. I'm super impressed. That might be for another stream. We'll talk about it. I kind of want to reserve talking about the console right now because this was a good game, but it is still a PS4 game. And I didn't get a whole lot of use out of the the controller's um, special situation. You know what I mean? This thing is not... Uh, this doesn't get a whole lot of use throughout the game. It l rumbles in some interesting ways while you're web swinging and stuff, which was kind of nice. It makes a little web sound when you, when you shoot the web out. Alright, that's kind of cool. But uh, otherwise... It's just a controller, you know? It's not really giving me the tour de force of the feedback system on that. So, console-wise, like, I'm very satisfied. Uh, definitely gives me a lot of hope that future games will be really good. But I think we gotta play more. I think we gotta play more before I can start talking about the console and what I think, especially the controller. 
Uh, but the good news is that the next game we're going to fire up uh, is the Astros Playroom. And that shit will most definitely give me a run-through on the controller and all the cool things it can do. And then um, I feel like I'll have a bit of a, bit of a better idea. I, I want to say, though, graphically, though, like... I'm really hopeful people do adopt the, the 80 frames on this game. I, I hope they show that... The, the, or the 60 frames, excuse me. I hope they show performance mode as the most preferred mode people play in. Because I really believe that it's a, it's a great mode. And I, I would love, instead of having these two options, give make 60 the standard. Make that the standard for future games and just dial back a little bit on the graphical prowess you know like in this one they really turned off a lot of stuff that i think you can still have you just got to build the game up from the ground up to be that the target 60 fps and then kind of put some of that extra little bits in there in this one they were like okay we're going to give you lots of extra little bits but no 60 or we're going to take a lot of those extra bits away and give you 60. I think you can have some of those extra bits and still be at 60. I think the PS5 can do it. I'm pretty certain ray tracing has been proven to be allowed at a 60 frame game. You could do it with ray tracing on. Uh, but really it's like the lighting, the resolution uh, that I was talking about, whatever whatever it does with the re resolution thing. And I'm, I'm watching this shit on a 55 inch TV that I, that's, that's not, it's like a year old. It's a, it, it was a, TV that was is the super best other than an OLED. It's considered the best. So I'm getting as much money out of my console as I can. You know, I'm getting the best fidelity I can. And I'm still telling you, even in fidelity mode, that shit just doesn't play like it does in 60. When you're in 60, it blows all the fidelity features out of the water. So I, I really hope people feel that the 60 is more important than whatever the graphical, the lighting and stuff in the other mode is. That way we can be standard on 60. We can all agree that our future games should try to hit 60 and don't do any of this weird graphical stuff. That doesn't really change. It doesn't impact the game experience as much as having 60 frames. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Really, really open for, but who knows? Maybe, maybe I'm, I, I might be in the minority. You know, it's fucking last generation. They they optimized for 30 frames. Maybe this generation they could change it. I'm not sure. Like I don't even know if Cyberpunk is gonna be that. You know what I'm saying? But Cyberpunk, like they don't even have it released yet for next gen gaming. It's still PS4 territory on that one. And I heard rumors that it might actually, it might actually get delayed again, which would be kind of funny if that's true. I'm going to unmute the game. We'll see if there's another another stinger, but I'm pretty sure it's over at this point. <laughs>